WSLS. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Power outages continue for some as another round of ice is on the way. We're working for you, looking zone by zone at exactly what you can expect. A warning from the nation's top disease expert as cities see their lowest COVID positivity rates. Why Dr. Fauci says you can't let your guard down. Rumors continue to swirl about the COVID-19 vaccine. We're working for you debunking the most common myths that are going around. Good morning and happy Wednesday to you. We thank you for waking up with us this morning. I'm Patrick McKee and I'm Rachel Lucas. We want to start you off with your forecast this morning. That's what we're all talking about as some winter weather approaches. That's right. Yeah, unfortunately, another significant winter storm on the way guys for tomorrow. That's basically from start to finish a winter storm warning in effect for all of the 10 news viewing area. Now this will produce different things for different parts of the area. Some snow, sleet and freezing rain north predominantly freezing rain as you go farther to the south. Let's show you what it means for the Roanoke Valley before sunrise could see a little burst of snow and sleet. Some light accumulations with that will be possible, but it does look like freezing rain takes over as the main type of precipitation. You're almost rooting for sleet because that wouldn't collect on the power lines, whereas freezing rain would. So messy roads and outages will be possible even in the Roanoke Valley. That's not necessarily confined to any one place or another. Today Today, though, is your day to prepare for the storm that's coming up tomorrow. It's cold out there, though. Temperatures low to mid 20s throughout the Roanoke Valley. We're back into the upper 30s to near 40 this afternoon, and our zone by zone breakdown continuing over the course of the next hour. It's been several days now since ice impacted the region, and there are still a lot of power outages this morning. We want to give you a look now at the Appalachian power map. Not nearly as many people without power, but still We've got a lot, about 1,500 across southwest Virginia. Officials say Floyd and Henry County's power won't fully be restored until tonight. Now, people are worried about the potential for even more winter weather coming in tomorrow. Henry County emergency crews are playing catch up after responding to more than 200 storm related incidents. A Danville Utilities lineman is recovering from burns after working to restore power on Sugar Tree Church Road in Pennsylvania County. Public safety officials are recommending you have enough food, water, and medications to last for 72 hours before the next storm hits. Download the 10 News Weather app to stay up to date on the coming winter weather. You'll also find a list of school closings, which we've got two this morning. Charlotte and Halifax County schools both are going to be closed. Across the country, as temperatures have dropped, the death toll is rising. Winter weather has been blamed for more than two dozen deaths, and experts say that number is expected to rise. In Texas, over three million homes and businesses had no power as of last night, and there's no timeline of when it will be turned back on. Long lines of people can be seen in this video in the parking lot there and running down the sidewalk. All of them are waiting to get inside the grocery store. More winter weather is forecast for the area today and tomorrow. The Red Cross is urging everyone to stay safe in this potentially life threatening winter weather. If you have to go out, limit your exposure by giving yourself breaks. Stay alert to symptoms of hypothermia and frostbite, including uncontrollable shaking, extreme fatigue and turning very pale. You got sips of broth. Uh, or tea or something that could start to warm you up, uh, putting blankers, blankets and layers on yourself, uh, you're going to start to raise your, your core body temperature uh, and can start the process of, of getting yourself into a less dangerous situation. House fires are another danger in cold weather. If you're using a space heater, make sure to clear a space around it, keeping away anything that could catch on fire. A warning from the nation's top disease expert as the World Health Organization is reporting a 16% decline in global coronavirus cases from just last week. Dr. Fauci is sounding the alarm not to get complacent. Coronavirus cases in America fall to their lowest number since mid-October, but it can be misleading. Officials say there is good reason for the hesitancy. UK uh, variant, the 117, that the modelers tell us will be will probably dominant in our own country by the end of March. But there is a silver lining as that UK variant rises in the US. Vaccines used in the US seem to work well against it. 
Senator Tim Kaine toured the vaccination site at the Salem Civic Center yesterday to get a firsthand look at the distribution system. One of his biggest takeaways was there's still a lot of confusion. He says he'll take what he's learned back to Washington to hearings on Capitol Hill. To help alleviate frustrations, the health department has launched a new centralized pre-registration system. You can find a link to that on WSLS.com. Many of you still have questions about the COVID-19 vaccines and rumors that continue to swirl. We're working for you debunking some of the most common myths. One common misconception is that mRNA technology is new. Doctors at the Cleveland Clinic say it's actually been around for about 10 to 15 years. Some people think the vaccine may give them coronavirus, but that also is a myth as this vaccine does not have the live virus in it. Another mistaken belief is that messenger RNA vaccines can alter your DNA, but RNA and DNA are different. It's not changing your DNA because people think, oh, it's going to change me. It's not integrating itself into your DNA. No, it's not changing who you are. Now, she also says people think they may not need the vaccine if they've already had COVID-19, but that's not the case. With the Senate impeachment trial in the past, now Congress can focus on President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan. It includes billions of dollars for vaccines and distribution, but time is running out for millions of Americans on other benefits. A lot of the current relief will expire in the middle of March, including the extended unemployment insurance benefits. There's also a lack of bipartisan support on stimulus checks. However, Democrats who have control can pass the bill without Republicans support. The Virginia Department of Health issued a warning to Liberty University after its campus wide snowball fight last month. Hundreds of students were seen standing shoulder to shoulder, many without masks. The health department says they received 119 complaints about this event. The university won't be punished, but VDH says there could be future action if there are more violations. The University of Virginia has put a hold on all in-person gatherings for the time being. UVA says they've seen a recent spike in COVID-19 cases both on and off campus. Students who live on campus are being asked to only leave their homes for essential activities like picking up food or going to class. 607 now in what's news today. Governor Ralph Northam will provide an update on the Commonwealth's coronavirus response and vaccination efforts. You can watch live right here on WSLS 10 starting at 2 as well as on WSLS.com. The Virginia Learns Work Group meets for the first time today. It was formed by the state superintendent of public instruction to assess the needs of students and school divisions as they implement Governor Northam's order to provide in-person instruction options by March 15th. The group's made up of educators, school administrators, mental health professionals and parents. The Montgomery County Planning Commission will hold a public hearing about adding wetland mitigation banks to the county's zoning ordinance. Wetland mitigation banks allow developers to offset negative impacts to streams or wetlands by buying credits from a mitigation bank. If approved, the Board of Supervisors will hold a public hearing next week. Lynchburg Technical Review Committee will meet today. The committee will consider plans for eight apartments and four commercial units on Old Forest Road. The committee reviews plans for compliance with the city zoning ordinance. The meeting will be held virtually. The investigation continues this morning after human remains were found on Holland University's campus yesterday afternoon. Ordnance County Police are working to gather more information in this case. They have not released the name of the deceased or a cause of death. Authorities are expected to be back on campus today. A teenager's fiance is in jail this morning, standing accused of her murder. Investigators say 18 year old Adriana Keffer was shot and killed by 22 year old D'Angelo Bonds early Monday morning after a struggle at their Ashton Heights apartment. Keffer's Facebook profile photo shows them together and lists the two as engaged. Police searched the area and found her body in the river near Piedmont Park. Bonds is charged with second degree murder and is set to appear in court March 19th. 
A federal judge has dismissed a lawsuit that a former Virginia Tech International student filed against two police officers. Young Song Zhao filed the suit after being charged, but later acquitted of a firearms charge in 2018. Zhao was a Chinese citizen on a student visa when he was charged and was expelled from Virginia Tech. In his lawsuit, he said two officers involved with his criminal case one from Virginia Tech and the other from the Blacksburg Police Department violated his civil rights. A judge ruled that Zhao's case lacked sufficient evidence. Court documents show his attorneys plan to appeal. 609 now still to come this morning, an eerily quiet day in New Orleans. How parts of the city still found creative ways to celebrate Mardi Gras. The new at 645 for a lot of people this past year has been difficult. How one Virginia woman is offering hope to those who are struggling. Plus, Roanoke County's first ever restaurant week is officially underway. What you need to know before you go. That's a cold start to the morning, but at least calm. Temperature in Blacksburg, 20 degrees. Roanoke at 24, Martinsville at 25. 20s this morning, no problem. 20s tomorrow morning, big problem. Winter storm coming our way once again. We break down the timing, the totals, and the impacts next on Virginia Today. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, we're highlighting the work of superintendents from across Southwest Virginia and their impact in the classroom. Just opening the door without providing the support isn't good enough. So access alone is not good enough. Opportunity alone is not good enough. Hear why representation is so crucial in a time like this, coming up Thursday at 7 on WSLS 10 News. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. There were many predictions quarantine was going to have a negative impact on relationships, but new research shows some couples feel like it actually brought them closer. Not only were couples spending more time together, but they were also doing a better job of dividing housework and that's helped increase their satisfaction. The Cleveland Clinic psychologist says for couples who are both at home 24 seven, make sure you make time for yourself too, and always show your appreciation. In a review of over 43 different studies and 11,000 couples interviewed, the number one factor in keeping couples together and close is expressing appreciation of your significant other. So today, make sure that you Tell them one thing that you really appreciate about them. She says if you find yourself having relationship issues, don't be afraid to seek out couples counseling. New this morning, the inaugural Roanoke County Restaurant Week is going on right now through next week. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live this morning with what you can expect from this brand new event. Megan, good morning. Good morning. So more than a dozen restaurants across Roanoke County have whipped up some specials so you can get your grub on this week and next week. Participating restaurants are offering lunch and dinner deals that are either $10 and under, $20 and under, or 30 and under. Roanoke County Economic Development launched this event because winter is a challenging time for many restaurants. Then add the countless other difficulties done on them due to this COVID-19 pandemic. That's why this restaurant week is longer than most. Roanoke County is a very big county and we circle Roanoke City and Salem. So there's a lot of ground to cover and uh, with it being 250 square miles and it being our first one, we really want to give everyone enough time to get out and explore new restaurants. The last day to get in on these deals is February 28th. We'll have a link to participating restaurants and menus on WSLS.com later today. And coming up in the next 30 minutes, we tell you how your support for these local restaurants doesn't end when you purchase that meal. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. All right, guys, today the calm before the storm tomorrow looking like a high impact, major impact winter storm, especially as you see here areas in the red. This is a new product that the National Weather Service puts out to help convey the impact and unfortunately looks like could be a dangerous storm in the form of power outages and down trees uh, in areas in the red. So especially near into the south of US 460 slick spots, especially as you head farther to the north. But this is not really a one size fits all kind of system because we're going to be dealing with 
different types of precipitation. Let's walk you through the timeline. This is about 4 or 5 a.m. and you notice that there is some snow and sleet to be had. But as you have warmer air coming in above us, you stand the chance, the likelihood for freezing rain to become the really dominant type of precipitation and that taking effect as we go from south to north throughout the morning tomorrow. So if you don't have to be on the roads tomorrow, I know it's a cliche we say all the time in the winter, but stay off the roads if you can, all right? Because there you have that widespread pink, that freezing rain moving through. Now, we may stand the chance of getting a brief break in the action early in the afternoon, but I do think precipitation will start to fill in as we head deeper into the afternoon. But if you're looking for more snow and sleet, we've combined the two on this map. You got to go farther to the north toward areas like I-64. You see a light accumulation of that possible from areas like Bland to Blacksburg to Parisburg to Newcastle to Botetot, Roanoke. Oak Bedford and Lynchburg, less of a chance happening farther to the south. I'm basically praying for sleet right now because that would take power outages almost out of the equation. However, with the warm air above and shallow cold layer below, you're looking at ice and freezing rain accumulations, including but not limited to areas that took the brunt of the hit last week. So you notice that purple there, half an inch of ice or more quarter of an inch to half an inch in the darker blue and then lesser totals, but still fairly significant as you go closer to the highlands. We'll continue to keep you posted as we still have more data coming in on your local weather authority app. You can also get the latest alerts sent straight to your phone. Let's start you out with this morning, though. It's a cold one out there with Phil. You're at 21, Lynchburg at 25, Lexington and Covington at 23 degrees. Temperatures only managed to get into the upper 30s and lower 40s today as clouds continue to increase ahead of our system. Now, by tomorrow morning, temperatures will be in the upper 20s. With it being that cold, anything that falls likely to stick. Your extended forecast for the Roanoke Valley does show some improvement. So this parade of winter storms ends tomorrow, but it ends with a bang. Unfortunately, it will be windy at times Friday. So for those of us that do lose power, it may be a couple of days before you get it restored. Uh, make sure that you have some extra blankets, things like that, just because it's going to get cold this weekend. Morning lows 15 to 20 degrees. We're back into the 40s by Sunday afternoon. At least some sunshine, though, for us. Let's find the silver lining in this black cloud for sure. Uh, by Tuesday, we're in the 50s, so that's even more of a silver lining for you. For the Lynchburg area, near 40 today. Again, our winter storm moving through tomorrow could start as a little bit of snow and sleet, but freezing rain looks to be the main type of precipitation. We're back in the 40s by Friday. Cold weekend in but more sunshine colder Saturday than Sunday back into the 50s by next Tuesday time now 619 roads are looking good right now let's get a check of some drive times and these look to be on time for us as we are accident free across the region 81 your drive with Phil Pulaski coming right now at 35 minutes on 460 Parisburg to Blacksburg that'll also take you 35. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Bitcoin hitting a major milestone, the cryptocurrency blasting past $50,000 for the first time ever on Tuesday. Bitcoin has jumped about 70% so far this year as it gains more acceptance among major companies and investors. A big catalyst for its record run coming after Tesla said it purchased $1.5 billion in Bitcoin and other more traditional financial institutions also announcing plans last week to support cryptocurrency, including MasterCard and Bank of New York Mellon. And U.S. oil prices hitting their highest level in more than a year as a deep freeze across the country and in the south is increasing demand and hampering supply. More than 4 million people in Texas were left without power on Tuesday morning, forcing utilities to black out in many cases. Gas prices have shot up as well due to a surge in demand. And electric moped company Revel announcing Tuesday it's going to be leasing electric bikes in New York City in hopes of capitalizing off of the surge of cycling amid the pandemic. The company will open a wait list for a few hundred bikes that will be available early March. Those e-bikes are going to cost $99 a month. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schuller from Cheddar Headquarters in Lower Manhattan. 621 now still to come this morning. Gas prices are going up. How this week's deep freeze across much of the country is increasing the price you pay at the pump. Plus, even a global pandemic can't keep the beads away in New Orleans. We'll tell you how different this year's celebration looked from years past. This is 10 News Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Yesterday was the last day of revelry before Lent for the Christians who celebrate. But in 2021, Mardi Gras in New Orleans 
isn't looking like it usually does. It definitely is not. Take a look at the French Quarter this year for Fat Tuesday and now last year. Big difference. Bourbon Street was practically a ghost town compared to any other year when it's packed full of parades and parties. City officials definitely didn't want the holiday turning into a COVID-19 super spreader event. Added to that, temperatures have been cold. Locals still celebrated, though, decorating their houses, which I love. Yeah. They are calling Yardy Girl. <laughs> Got to do creative. something to keep the spirit going you because, do. you know, things are just very different this year. You mm -hmm. do. It's creativity, though. It's something that has uh, certainly shine brightly yeah, over it the has. past 10 months. Absolutely. Especially with those colors. Could you imagine like driving through neighborhoods and seeing the, the purple, the yellow, the yeah. green, all that brightness? Especially with this recent weather pattern all of us have had with all the clouds, it'd be nice to get a little extra brightness. At least we finally saw a little bit of sunshine, but unfortunately we got more of that uh, ice stuff coming back. That nonsense, yeah. So uh, fortunately after that, things do start to look up for us into the weekend. Let's start you out with today in Southside. The calm before the storm. We're in the 20s this morning. We're in the upper 30s and lower 40s this afternoon, but we are concerned once again with not just Southside, but we'll take you zone by zone in Southside. This is tomorrow. And notice again, half an inch plus of ice is going to be a possibility, if not a likelihood. Again, I've been saying this all morning. I'm like keeping my fingers crossed that we see more sleep than anything because that would reduce the chance for power outages. But unfortunately, it looks like freezing rain will be the main type of precipitation we see in south side. It's not just icy roads, power outages, down trees and limbs. Those are things we're going to be watching out for as we go through tomorrow with our zone by zone breakdown continuing over the next half hour. 626 this morning, major help coming to Virginians struggling with rent. The new funding the governor just announced to help keep families in their homes. Plus, Roanoke County Restaurant Week is underway. How your support for local restaurants doesn't end at your purchase. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. In-person learning plans from lawmakers in Richmond. How newly proposed legislation could affect both schools and parents. It's been almost a year of remote learning, how this has impacted kids' mental health and how doctors say they can recover. The Star City Mayor under fire. Why Mayor Sherman Lee is apologizing for a recent Facebook post. Good morning to you and thanks for waking up with us on this Wednesday. I'm Rachel Lucas. And I'm Patrick McKee and we are still seeing power outages from the weekend storm that we had. Danville was hit hard, still around 3,000 outages this morning. We want to give you a look at the Appalachian power map there. As you can see, still 1,500 homes without power here in southwest Virginia. Pennsylvania County has declared a local state of emergency ahead of the storm we are about to see tomorrow. Meteorologist Chris Michaels here to talk more about that, and there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot to talk about. We'll start you out with the winter storm warning that the National weather service has upgraded us to this is no real surprise we've been talking about the storm for a few days now but the entire area will be under a winter storm warning some of that starting this evening especially the farther south you go but for a lot of us this will be an all day thursday kind of thing let's break it down as we continue with our zone by zone uh, outlook for the highlands may start to see some snow and sleet before 6 or 7 a.m and then gradually as we go through the morning this changes over to some freezing rain so slick travel expected you may have a few sporadic power outages in the highlands, but the better chance for those is going to be farther to your south. Today is your day to prepare for this storm as we see temperatures in the upper 30s and clouds increasing. We'll be near 40 by Friday. Thing is, with Friday, we'll see some snow on the west facing slopes. Also see some wind. Once that wind calms down, we start out in the teens each morning this weekend back into the 40s by Sunday perhaps near 50 by next Tuesday. So while this storm is going to be a bad one tomorrow, at least there is a light at the end of the tunnel and this pattern is breaking as we head into early next week. Thank goodness for that. Download the 10 news weather app to stay up to date on the upcoming winter storm. You'll find there also school closings and this morning we're seeing just a couple. Charlotte and Halifax County schools are both closed today. Virginia lawmakers are pushing to get kids back into the classroom. A bill moving through the General Assembly would provide a blueprint for in-person learning while also providing more flexibility. The legislation, which would go into effect this summer, gives parents an option to keep their child at home and gives districts a choice to close down certain schools if there is a COVID-19 outbreak. 
let's be real, right? Virtual learning is not in-person learning. Uh, you know, kids are, are, are not learning as much as they would in a class. The governor is pushing for kids to return in some form by March 15th. The Montgomery County School Board held a lengthy meeting that went late into the night. The board talked about plans for students to return to the classroom, but they didn't make any decisions. They have called for a special meeting for next Tuesday. A family survey on the proposed plan is going to be sent out today for feedback that's due by Friday. Schools in many areas are approaching the anniversary of the shift to online and remote learning. While more than half of students engaged in all types of learning say they're more stressed this year than last, a study by NBC News and Challenge Success finds remote students were more likely to report stress-related symptoms. Another report of the CDC reveals mental health-related emergency room visits are up in children and teens. Day after day of no social interaction, no school. It's getting to them. It gets to us. There is hope, though, they'll recover. He says kids are physically, mentally, and emotionally resilient and should bounce back quickly. A major announcement from Governor Ralph Northam yesterday to help people struggling to pay rent because of the pandemic. Virginia has received $524 million in new federal funding to help keep families in their homes. This will assist households and landlords with rent payments to avoid eviction. The governor is urging anyone who's eligible to apply quickly. You can find a link to determine your eligibility on WSLS.com. Meanwhile, President Biden is extending the ban on housing foreclosures for federally backed mortgages until June 30th. It was originally set to expire at the end of next month. The White House also announced an extension on the mortgage relief program. Roanoke Mayor Sherman Lee has apologized to the Patrick Henry girls basketball team after making a controversial comment. This happened Monday night as the Patrick Henry girls hoisted the regional championship trophy. Later that night, the head coach posted on Facebook about the win. That's when Mayor Lee wrote, please note a lot of good basketball programs in the state are not playing basketball. No Richmond City schools playing because of COVID-19. Everything won this year needs an asterisk by it. Mayor Lee. The mayor tells 10 News he considers the coach a good friend and thought he was private messaging him. I thought it was a joke that I could talk with Mike about. I didn't send that to him recognizing that it would go all over Facebook. But I apologize to him. And then I'm going to be apologizing to the team because I'm a big supporter of athletics in this city. I wish the comment wasn't made, but it was. And now it's a learning experience for all. And that's, that's for me, that's for my team, that's for, for everybody involved. Now, Mayor Lee wants to make sure it's clear that his comments were a reflection of him and not the rest of city council. A city spokeswoman said this was a personal matter for the mayor and not official city business. Time now 636. We're starting out cold out there. Temperatures in the upper teens to near 20 in the New River Valley. Like the rest of us, high temperatures make their way into the upper 30s with clouds increasing today. Your day to prepare for tomorrow's winter storm. Could see a batch of snow and sleep briefly early in the morning for the New River Valley. Mainly freezing rain and rain though. So looking at significant ice accumulations being possible. With that, some messy roads and some power outages continuing as we go through the day tomorrow. A plan to boost business during the challenging winter months. What you can expect from one county's first ever restaurant week. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, we're highlighting the work of superintendents from across Southwest Virginia and their impact in the classroom. Just opening the door without providing the support isn't good enough. So access alone is not good enough. Opportunity alone is not good enough. Hear why representation is so crucial in a time like this Coming up Thursday at 7 on WSLS 10 News. 639 new this morning for the first time. Roanoke County is having its own restaurant week. 
It's happening this week and next. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live to help you plan your next takeout order. And if you're like me, you need to switch things up a little bit. So this is going to be great for that. Yeah, and I know a lot of people's uh, taste buds are pretty anxious for this. It's going on right now and participating restaurants are spread throughout the county. So it could be in the county, Salem or Vinton. So you have a lot to choose from. Roanoke County Restaurant Week is split. The deals are split into three price ranges and depending on the restaurant the specials can apply to takeout dine-in or both this is a slower time of year for restaurants and combine that with the blows of this pandemic and Roanoke County Economic Development says these restaurants need your help and your support doesn't stop at buying a meal sharing your picture uh, on your social media and we're using the hashtag Roco eats capital R O C O lowercase eats um, just taking a picture and sharing as much as you can leaving a good review for uh, a restaurant. The last day to snag deals is February 28th. We'll have a link to participating restaurants and menu on WSLS.com live in the newsroom. Megan Woods 10 news working for you. All right, coming up on 641, let's get back over to Chris with an update on your forecast that is not looking so good. No, not at all. In fact, today, take whatever time you can to make preparations for tomorrow's winter storm. That's coming in for the Lynchburg area. We start you out cold temperatures low to mid 20s this morning. We only managed to get into the upper 30s to near 40 by the afternoon with clouds increasing. Could see a brief period of snow and sleet early tomorrow morning. That would be before 6 or 7 a.m. Freezing rain looks to be the main precipitation type that we deal with. You almost hope for a deeper layer of cold air near the surface because that would translate to sleet and would lessen the power outage threat. But however, uh, we got to prepare for that threat for power outages with freezing rain on the way. We'll update you on totals coming up in just a little bit. Expect to pay more at the pump. Coming up, we're going to tell you the two reasons behind the big surge we're seeing in gas prices. Connecting with others has been a challenge during the pandemic. How one Virginia woman is uplifting people all around the world. In your feel good BA this morning, for many people, the last year has been difficult and isolating. But as Chelsea Donovan reports, a young Virginia woman is trying to share some hope and compassion with those who are struggling. Connecting with others has been a challenge during COVID, to say the least. Something so small and simple as a handwritten note did so much for me that I just wanted other people to feel that way. Jordi um, Fernando experienced a message of hope about seven years ago that uplifted her spirits. I started compassion cards just out of a very hopeless place in my life. I've struggled with depression and anxiety and self image issues. Compassion Cards was born, a nonprofit headquartered in Norfolk that sends handwritten cards to anyone all over the world. In the past, we've sent cards to foster kids, the LGBTQ plus community, people who are struggling with food insecurity unhoused people, folks who are incarcerated. The letters of love took on new legs during COVID. This past year, we did a lot of cards to senior citizens in the area who have been stuck at home. We sent over 13,000 cards to elderly folks in 2020. In total, volunteers have sent over 30,000 cards in the past few years. Simple acts of kindness that can go a long way. Just to remember that the world is better because all of us are here and um, that we can get through tough things together. I was at a pretty dark point in my life when someone actually gave me a card randomly just to kind of like speak some life into me. And that really gave me a lot of hope to just continue on. That was Chelsea Donovan reporting. The Compassion Cards team has delivered cards all over the U.S., Africa and Central America. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. All right, today the calm before the storm, a significant winter storm, unfortunately for us. Tomorrow, winter storm warning in effect for the entire 10 News viewing area due to the combination of snow, sleet, and predominantly freezing rain. This is midnight. You notice most of us are dry. It's as we head into the early morning hours that we see a combination of snow and sleet moving from south to north. But eventually what you get 
is this layer of warm air above us so that rain comes down to the ground and freezes on contact with it. That's your freezing rain that eventually does become your dominant type of precipitation there in the pink. This is 5 a.m. You see it's a mess out there tomorrow. Same can be said as we really go through the rest of the morning and temperatures are kept in the upper 20s to near 30 degrees. Now as we head into the early part of the afternoon, you may see a brief break in the action. But temperatures or excuse me, precipitation will start to fill back in. So as far as snow and sleet, we've combined the two here and you notice that your better chance of any kind of significant accumulation of that is going to be close to and north of Interstate 64. Some lighter accumulations kind of compacted by any ice would be in Roanoke in the NRV and in the Lynchburg area where south side sees less in the way of snow and sleet. Unfortunately, that means more in the way of freezing rain. In fact, as you head towards south side, you're looking at the likelihood of half an inch of ice or more. That's where you really start to get numerous to widespread power outages once again. Where we could see a quarter of an inch to half an inch is in the areas in the blue. So the New River Valley, the Roanoke Valley, most of the Lynchburg area, a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch as you head farther to the north. So prepare to lose power. Again, this may not be something that everybody gets, but numerous power outages outages are expected with the amount of ice coming in. So stock up on food that won't go bad. So that way you're not losing money. You're not wasting food or anything like that because you may be without power in parts of the area for a couple of days. Have some extra blankets, sweatshirts around because it will be getting colder as we head into the weekend. Batteries, flashlight, a charged phone. That way you can get alerts, especially on our weather app. Now heading into Friday, the weather will start to improve a little bit, but it will be windy out there. So any kind of power restoration effort will take some time. Eventually, high pressure comes into control of our weather, leading to more sunshine as we head into the weekend. But with this storm coming in, we're posting frequent updates on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For today, clouds increasing, temperatures upper 30s and lower 40s. Then by tonight, we see temperatures fall into the upper 20s. That means that anything that falls, snow, sleet, freezing rain tomorrow, will stick. So stay home if you can on a day like tomorrow. Eventually by Friday morning, we'll start out slick, but we'll see things improving a little bit. For the New River Valley, temperatures 30s the next three afternoons, next four afternoons, I should say. We start out in the teens, Saturday and Sunday mornings. It's very cold as we head into the weekend, but at least some sunshine, maybe a brief period of rain snow mix on Monday, but things really starting to look up by next Tuesday. For the Roanoke Valley, 40 today, again, barely above freezing, if at all, tomorrow with our winter storm coming in. We're in the 40s Friday, 30s Saturday, dry this weekend, thank goodness. We're back in the 40s by Sunday afternoon. Brief rain, maybe a little bit of mix of snow coming in Monday. Looks to target mainly the higher elevations, but look at Tuesday. Let's hope that holds with high temperatures by then in the 50s. The time now is 6.50. Let's get you caught up on drive times across the area. Things looking good this morning on 460. A little bit of a slowdown there. If you're driving eastbound Forest to Lynchburg, going to take you 20 minutes. On 460, Bedford to Roanoke, 31 minutes. Yesterday was a scary day for those living in Brunswick County, North Carolina, when a tornado ripped through the area overnight. This little dog, lucky to be alive this morning after it got sucked from its house during the tornado. She's a Yorkshire Terrier named Penny, and her owner says the tornado sounded like a freight train outside. I looked and I didn't have time. If I'd have waited even a second, me and my son would have been out the back door and I didn't have time to grab Penny and she went flying with my, you can see our mattress I actually had a headboard, sheets, covers, all of that good stuff that went flying out with her and she was just bundled up in it. Three people were killed and 10 others were injured from that tornado. Prices at the pump have been inching up over this past week. According to AAA, the average for a gallon of regular gas has spiked 14 cents over the last month. The price hikes are driven by a one-two punch of freezing winter weather, shutting down 20% of the nation's oil refineries and a new surge in demand for gas as the country begins to recover. Experts say prices could go up anywhere from 10 to 55 cents a gallon in the next few months. Let's hope it's closer to 10 than 55. Yes, let's hope so indeed.
IHOP is canceling its National Pancake Day celebration, but don't worry, you can still get some free breakfast. In years past, the restaurant chain has given away free flapjacks on Fat Tuesday. Executives decided against that this year due to the pandemic. Instead, customers can get a free short stack anytime in April. Just download a coupon on the company's website, but it does require a $10 minimum purchase. The promotion will also apply to to-go and delivery orders. 6.52 now. we got five things you need to know coming up next. Stay with us. 6.55, here's five things you need to know before heading out the door this morning. A bill moving to the General Assembly would provide a blueprint for in-person learning while also providing more flexibility. That legislation, which would go into effect this summer, gives parents an option to keep their children at home and gives districts a choice to close down certain schools if there's a COVID-19 outbreak. Governor Ralph Northam announced help is coming for people struggling to pay rent because of the pandemic. Virginia has received $524 million in new federal funding. This will assist households and landlords with rent payments to avoid eviction. He's urging anyone who's eligible to apply quickly. It's been several days now since ice impacted the region. There are still a lot of power outages. A look at Appalachian Power this morning. Uh, you can see a lot of people without uh, around 1500 in southwest Virginia. Officials say Floyd and Henry County's power is going to take at least until tonight to get that all back on. Pennsylvania County has declared a local state of emergency ahead of the storms that we're about to see tomorrow. The winter weather has closed two schools this morning. Charlotte County and Halifax County remain closed. You can find those on our website, WSLS.com and on the 10 News and Weather app. And guys, I fully expect more by tomorrow. In fact, take the time today to make whatever pre pre preparations that you see fit for the storm that comes tomorrow. Stay off the roads if you can by tomorrow. By Friday morning, they'll stay slick as we head into the morning. Coming up today around 8 o'clock, we'll dive deep into the weeds on Thursday's winter storm. Snow, sleet, freezing rain totals impacts what you can do to get ahead of the storm. That'll be on Facebook Live every half hour throughout the Today Show and on WSLS.com. All right, coming up next on today, an exclusive one on one interview with Vice President Kamala Harris in her first network interview since taking office. We want to leave you with a live look at the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport this morning. Beautiful sunrise bundle up outside as you head out the door.